Creator's Child presents a thought-provoking fable, the Matstick's elder brother, that illuminates a primal approach to God. Chizne kaha, the Matstick said. Kaha, what did he say? Matches ne kaha, Suraj mera bada bhai hai. The matchstick actually said, the sun is my big brother. Ye sunkar sab log has pade, which everyone burst into laughter. Ab hasi kam hui, when the laughter subsided, Suraj ne bola, isme hai itni himmat. The sun said, he has such courage. Son said he has such courage. Surely he must be my long lost brother. As we laugh at the matchstick's presumption at calling itself the son's brother, the son looked at its attitude and said, That attitude makes you my brother. Now this approach is in direct contradiction to many uh, attitudes central to many religions which suggest that you should erase your ego, prostrate before God, submit to the divine will. Today we take a closer look at the Vira path. We can call this approach the matchsticks chutzpa or we can call it by the older ancient Indian name the Veera path. The path where you stand face to face with God and claim a deep kinship, a deep equality even. There is a big stumbling block in the Veera path and that is there is a gap between the matchstick's truth and the truth. Now most of us humans see ourselves as physical beings in a physical world subject to matter, gravity, time, space, subject to death which is final. And so, to the vast majority who are scrambling around and consider themselves to be ants in the cosmic frame of things, the Veera path seems presumptuous, arrogant, blasphemous even. Yeah. In a world of matchsticks that burn up, are you going to be the fool to say, we are eternal? Let us turn to a brilliant example of the Veera path. When Shankaracharya, still wet from the river, came out, some say stark naked, shouting, Shivoham, Shivoham which translated means I am Shiva or I am God. He certainly would have created a stir. In some parts of the world, the reaction would have been much, much more than a stir. But obviously Lord Shankaracharya carried great conviction and the tradition he was part of was big enough and vast enough to embrace him knowing that he spoke the truth. They did of course challenge him to numerous debates, many which he won. And so it is amazing that at the age of 30, he had walked the length and breadth of India, defeating some of the most erudite minds in great debates. In one, he, a Platonist or a Brahmachari who had never had sex, 
was challenged to a debate about sex. He thought he was going to fail completely. But that night the Devi, the Divine Mother came to him. And so the next day when he was in debate, he was inspired and defeated a brilliant erudite Brahmin who knew sexuality from a human perspective. However, not all cultures are going to be this accepting of such presumptuous claims when Jesus claimed to be the son of man it eventually led to his being crucified facing the challenge of the Vira part one of our advanced students one day spoke to her friends while on a beach and spoke how deeply she was connected with the universe. At which point they challenged her. If you're so connected with the universe, get the sea in front of us to rise up. Now, she made the mistake of taking on their challenge in their terms. She had several choices. One, she could have outright refused the challenge and told them that like, if they were really interested, they could come to her and she would guide them within six months, one year, two years to a deeper understanding. Or she could have taken on the challenge differently. Being a formidable psychic, she could have told the friends the color of the condom one had in his bedroom in the hotel. She could have told another about the medication they were taking for a vaginal infection. But instead, she chose to take on the challenge of trying to make the sea rise up. Well, the truth of the matter is that at that particular time, this was about 15, 20 years ago, it was true that she had witnessed the deep connection between herself and the universe. That is true. And it's also true that she had, using these gifts, healed to a small extent a handful of people affected by a man-made disaster. That too is true. But by no means had she ever or was she capable then of getting the sea to rise. Let alone even getting a feather to move. Now, to her great credit, when she tried, and she really tried, the sea, the waves actually responded to a very tiny extent, but it was barely visible to anybody. So in, the, in her eyes, in the eyes of the friend, she f failed horrifically. But if you look at it in another way, if on that day, for some curious reason, the universe had decided to listen to her, and a great wave had been generated, then it was possible that the wave would have come and washed away her friends, herself, and two to three thousand people inward. That would have been catastrophic to numerous people and beings, and especially to her, the reincarnational consequences would have been terrifying. 20 years later, the advanced student has made great strides spiritually. She has successfully run for a decade 
a school for special children. She has grown to such an extent that she is now able to touch hundreds of trees and strengthen them and enrich them. She can inspire trees that produce far greater quantum of oxygen directly fighting climate change. Vera path is rapid but dangerous. The Vera path is the most direct path to God. It's the path that prophets, saviors, devis take. It's a path that is particularly suited for our time. But it is also a path with high rewards and tremendous dangers. For after a presumptuous claim comes a tremendous slap in the face to ensure that truth and egoic arrogance are separated. Sometimes people facing the God's kick in the stomach really recover in that life. So as I was saying these words, God offers a path which in a sense is a gentler path. God suggests an alternate fast path. And in this he says, all that you need to do is turn your face to me. Turn your face to God. And one by one, I will take you up the steps towards a greater understanding of yourself, towards a greater acceptance of me. Know this, he says, you have emerged from the molten heart of me. You are the fullness and magnificence of all creation. Focused on you. Right now, you are like electricity running through a house, lighting up a single bulb. It takes great faith, courage, dedication and intensity to go from that to being lightning in the sky, to being the branches of eternity. Thank you for subscribing to our channel, visiting creatorschild.com and growing with God.